it'll, it'll work itself out one way or another. Um, yeah, you're probably right. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 157 for Thursday, the 11th of January, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their and their guests celebrate. Damn it, I should just read the board. Kent, how you doing, man? <laughs> oh, amused. I'm incredibly amused. Um, I'm all right. Uh, work has been chaotic, so I am thrilled to be here on Ritual Misery Podcast. Yeah, I'm... Um, y- like every week, you sound like a guest. Like you're, oh my god, I'm so thankful to be here tonight. Thanks for inviting <laughs> me. Like you're kind of the co-founder of this shenanigans <laughs> shit show, dude. Like I don't, I don't understand. Uh, we do have a surprise guest though, someone who just kind of popped in and said, uh, "I can hang out for an hour, so let's do this thing." We got BioCal with us tonight. How are you? Hey, how's it going? I'm pretty good. How are you guys? This, uh, this, Great. this is not your first appearance on the show. In any form, this is your first appearance on an actual podcast, though. That is correct. Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. I was, man, I had to reach back in, like, catalogs of, <laughs> of shit going on. Has he been on? Has he not been on? Has right. he been on? Has he... <laughs> As like... I recall, I, I called in for the New Year's Eve stream from my car on the way home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the original one. The original, uh, the, the yeah. first time out. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh, so, BioCal... You, you, People who watch the show might know BioCal because of things like Showbot.tv and his name in the chat room, which is BioCal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, long time Diamond Clipper and uh, been around, been doing cool shit for a long time. So we're, we're very happy to have you on. Thank you. Especially considering well, yeah, long overdue. Room. I would say way, way overdue. Hmm. Although, uh, to be to be certain, the invite has been there for <laughs> forever. It's been there for it like has. a long time. And I apologize. And you know, my wife my wife is crazy. I was going to say my life is crazy. And uh, my wife and I both um, are probably true. Uh, yeah, I was good. <laughs> They're not <laughs> <Yeah>. mutually exclusive. <laughs> um, crazy wife, crazy life, right? Uh, uh, hey, if happy life, happy or happy wife, happy life goes together, then crazy life, crazy wife should go together. I feel yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, if you're just going to start pairing stuff, let's just keep pairing it on. Um, Hey, uh, Kent, I got an update to my, uh, to my surgery status. Uh, you about to have another one? No. Well, maybe, I don't know, but I, I'm, I can't say no. Cause I, uh, 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 as soon as I said, no, they'd be like, ah, oh, you're going in tomorrow. Um, no, I got my stitches out. Well, my stitch, I only had one stitch. It was a, like a six inch incision and it was like looped through like laced like a shoe or whatever, you know, it was just sure. one, yeah, yeah. one stitch the whole way. What? Um, and it's like a girdle, it was a girdle. It almost was. Yeah. I, well, I felt like a stuffed animal, like, you know, we have this, all the stitchings on the inside, except for that one part right in the ass, which is where they put <laughs> all the stuffing in. I, I kind of <laughs> yeah. felt like that, but they went ahead and took that out. So now I just have. I just have a line there, the second second ass ass crack. Okay, well that's uh that's all right, I guess. You ever had stitches? Me? Yeah. I mean, do do staples count? Because <laughs> I'm sitting here. I, well, okay. So the, my hesitation was that I, I of course I've had stitches. Then I was like flipping through the rolodex of my memory, like, oh, where did I have stitches? I remember staples. Oh God. <laughs> I had staples in my head. Um, right now, I cannot remember stitches. Yeah, because you got staples in your head when you smacked it on a on a, on a hanger, right? Back in Florida. Yeah, so, yeah, this is back in Florida, like twenty, God, twenty two years ago, probably. We're um, preparing for a hurricane, so we're bringing all the equipment into the hangar. I just realized how old that made me sound. Twenty two years ago, when I was in the Air Force. Uh, you know, you know, holy crap. So we were getting ready for a hurricane, bringing all the crap into the hangars, and there was a a, a uh, engine maintenance stand that I was pushing into the hangar, and this thing was heavy as shit, but it had really tiny wheels, and when I was pushing it into the hangar, there was like a, I don't know, maybe a two-inch lip on the floor. Well, the wheel, the front wheels, caught that thing and caused, the, the momentum caused the back end to raise up, which was like where I was. I was pushing it from the back end, and when it raised up, I kept walking under it and it had this, this like really heavy hook thing that was probably about eye level with me. So when the ass end fell back down, 
it landed right on top of my head. And um, yeah, when uh, when they say you get your bell rung, like that's exactly what happened. I literally <laughs> heard in my head just this. Uh, is, stars, is, everything. Like it was the whole thing. Well, my my thing was that I was like, oh fuck, I hope nobody saw that because that's that's pretty embarrassing, right? So I I move around, I get the I get the the main stand into the hangar and I start pushing it. And you spent some time in Florida, right? You know how just absolutely hot and muggy and just nasty the place is. You just basically live in your own sweat. Um, it's very much like Okinawa. It's. <sighs> It, it's it's not like wading through butter. It's like wading through Fumunda. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> um, it smelled better than that. Maybe. But uh, well, anyway. So <laughs> you know, you were always sweaty there, right? Mm. And this this was a a really a particularly hot day. So I'm like, man, I got so much sweat right now. I just gotta just gotta wipe this off. And I wipe my head, look at my hand, and it's just red. My hand is red. Bright I'm like, red. What? The hell? Yeah, so I'm staring at the floor and looking at my hand, just trying to figure out what just happened. And as I'm looking down at my hand, I just see a puddle forming on the floor and just this drip, 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 drip. Yeah, I was bleeding profusely from the top of my head. And, uh, yeah, I got rushed to the emergency room. This, uh, I mean, this does explain a a long history of (laughs) symptoms of TBI. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) Yeah, but that's yeah, that was that's probably my my greatest uh, greatest injury that required any sort of uh, doctor intervention. Mm. Uh, two two staples on top of my head. Uh, that was. Uh, did they did, did they have to go and take those out? I mean, is that like a process where they just go in there and use one of those yeah, little they, clampy things or what? Like, I, yeah, they had to, they had to remove them. That you know, the worst thing about the the whole thing it wasn't getting my getting my head uh, hit. It wasn't the the staples being put in. It wasn't any of that. The worst thing about the whole thing was when the doctor went in to clean the wound, mm. because they, he used like it's basically like a miniature pressure washer, mm. and it felt like someone was was like hammering a <laughs> nail into my skull. <laughs> it was fucking awful. Well, I mean, to be fair, it, it, it wasn't far from it when they're shoving staples into your into your nugget. So <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> How about you, BioCal? Are, are are you a veteran of the, the, the stitches or staples? Yeah, I've had a couple in my life. I'm just thinking, is there enough meat up there on top of your head to like get staples in? That's crazy, though. Yeah, I mean, it's more than you think. More than you think. Really? Well, I mean, with Ken, it wouldn't matter anyway, because the further you pushed it in, it'd just be less effective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah. It'd no. be like, like pu- pushing on my soft spot. You know. So do you do you have like a scar now that you can show when you flip your hair the other way? I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen a, a bald head uh, in a while. So, yeah. so Where, where'd you get so your stitches I, at there? I I understand how much like a head wound can can bleed. So my my experience with stitches was my chin. Mm. I actually um, passed out for no reason and I fell and I happened to hit a hammer that was sitting on the ground, the claw end of a hammer, and I split my chin open. When I woke up, I was on my hands and knees with, with my hand cupped kind of under my head. I don't know how I got in this position, but there was a pool of blood in my hand. <clears throat> and my chin was split open to the point where I went in the bathroom and kind of blotted all the blood off, took a look, and I could see my jawbone. Mm. <laughs> so, Ooh. Ooh. I, uh, so uh, I'm having, a, <laughs> having trouble like visualizing. Like you're, Were you walking through a warehouse of hammers, or was this like this? <laughs> The one random hammer that just happened to be laying right there in that one perfect he was, spot. He was at like, the hammer factory. The, the yeah, hammer yeah. factory, yeah. The, he, was dr- he was drunk at work at the hammer factory. <laughs> <laughs> he was hammered at the hammer factory. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Like, wow, that's, that's... Yeah, no, it was dumb luck. It was, it was, I was hanging a, a, a picture earlier, and I put the hammer on the ground, and I was doing something else, and then I passed out and fell over and hit the hammer. So. Oh, Jesus. That's that yeah. just that's got it. That's that's sad. But that's yeah. not fun. There's like three or four stitches, and they put it in and uh, healed up. And I went to, into the uh, to the hospital about a week, week and a half later for them to take it out. And the nurse was like kind of tugging on him with tweezers, and she pulled one out, pulled the second out, and was pulling at the third one, just pulling as hard as she could, and it wouldn't come out. It was one of my hairs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. <God. laughs> 
Well, luckily, Ow. luckily, I didn't have any uh, stitch hair confusion on my back when they were pulling the stitches <laughs> out. Did Jesus. George the Animal Steel? <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> No, it was one of those things that, like I said, is a continuous stitch. It was, it was beautifully done. Like she, she, and this is her remark. Uh, Candace was 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 the was the lady's name, and she was like, um, I asked you know, who did the stitching. She goes, Oh, I did. And I was like, It's it's really good. Like for for a person with some OCD, I'm glad. Like all my all my little stitch scars are going to be symmetrical. Like, you know, it it, it per- fits perfectly. She goes, You should have seen the work on the inside where I stitched it up. And I was like, oh, so the perfect stitch on my back is when you were tired. I get it. No, that's cool. Ah. Um, uh, but yeah, she uh, she clipped it all through. Like she cut it and pulled it, cut it and pulled it, cut, pulled, cut, pulled. And um, I I couldn't tell what was really going on back there because the first time she did the first one, I got it itch. And you know when you have an itch on your back or like the back of your leg, like somewhere where there's not a lot of nerve endings. It doesn't matter. The, the itch could be in your lower back, but you scratch between your shoulder blades and, and it relieves it, you know? Right, so yeah. my whole back was just suddenly like this, this huge fire of itchiness. And I like all, I, I was sitting there on, like laying on the, on the, on the, the bed and had my head on a pillow and I started just scratching my, my shoulder. And she was like, are you feeling okay? I'm like, yep. Just scratching my shoulder was relieving all that itch back there. It was nuts. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that happened yesterday and so far so good. I don't have any, you know, bulging sonomas full of brain fluid trying to escape out of my back like a fucking alien or anything. So um, we're good. That's there. usually a good thing. I mean, yeah, it's, it's much better than the alternative of exactly what I just stated. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, Another two weeks off work just to make sure that I don't stress myself. And uh, and cause basically what they did is they, you know, I went in for that blood patch, right? Well, they, they w- instead of just going in and just filling me up, like we talked about before with, with blood and say, ho- hoping it would work, they went in there and kind of deliberately placed the blood where they wanted it with a catheter in my spine. Um, so it was more of a, a very focused blood patch. And uh, they, they're afraid that um, if I start twisting too much or exercising and going up downstairs too much, things like that. It could still break one of those little scabs free and cause a problem. So another two weeks of sitting around uh, yelling at everybody in the family because I don't have uh, stupid airmen to take migrations out on. And yeah, uh, yeah more time to not figure out Twitch because I can't figure that shit out to save my life. <sighs> oh boy. Yeah. Um, man. So this weekend, my goal this weekend was to take down the Christmas lights mm. from the roof. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't happen because uh, I have a girlfriend that decided that she needed a shelf. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 So that's that's pretty much what I did. My, I still have Christmas lights up. Uh, it's the middle of January, and I'm one of those people that still has Christmas lights. I don't turn them on. They haven't been on since December. Uh, so I'm not I'm not all the way that guy. Thank you. Christ, because I I hate that. <laughs> Some of my neighbors still have their Christmas lights up. I'm like, really? Yeah. Or like on, like they turn them on. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, so I I I made a shelf, and now Steph has a place for her tea, and all of her tea accessories. She is a tea aficionado, so, and she likes to make all kinds of tea. So you have a tea shelf. Yes. <laughs> no. No, it's pretty good though because like I I get to reap the benefits of this because she makes me tea and she constantly offers me tea and I get all the tea and any kind of tea that I want. So it's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, we have a coffee. But I still have Christmas lights up, so fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of our Christmas lights are down. Our Christmas tree is still up though. We haven't taken because it's a it's a real tree. So we got to take it to get it recycled. And, of course, I can't lift. And, of course, nobody in the rest of the family was like, well, I'll volunteer to carry the tree out to the truck and go with you to dump it off somewhere. So it's still up. It's um, it's budding. It's got little buds on it. It's got little pine cones that are, that oh. are all over the place. And, and it's uh, it's shedding. So it's it's budding and shedding. Um, it's got no decorations on it, so it's just naked. So I'm, eventually I'm going to end up with the with a, a nine-foot-tall Charlie Brown tree with, like, just – half dead pine cones hanging off of it and no leaves or, or needles or anything. So that's, that's going to be remarkable. That's great. That's um, awesome. Yeah. You know, that's th- things to look forward to. 
Well, Cal, do you uh, do you use a real tree or a fake tree? Uh, this year we had a fake tree actually. So um, it was like this cheesy like white tree with LEDs at the tips kind mm-hmm. of a thing. But um, you say cheesy, I think easy because yeah, it, it, we went with easy <laughs> this year exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've we've never had a real tree at my house. Like even when I was a kid or since I've been an adult. A, it's always been a plastic piece of shit. This is the first real tree I remember since living with my grandpa and grandma in Santa Maria, California, in like the early '80s. And talk about aging yourself, <clears throat> right? Um, <laughs> so it was probably like '81 or '82 when we lived there, and uh, this is the last time I remember having a real tree. So this was an experience going out and actually cutting it down ourselves and having to trim it up and trim it down because you know originally it was too high to put the star on top. Um, just overall, it was, it was a good experience. Now we're at, at the tail end of it where it's like, ah, shit, what do we do with this? Right, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, not, it's not like you can go, like, replant it in the backyard. No, I, that, that'd be, you know, that, that's, that's probably something we should do is just have, like, a, uh, a, a smaller tree and just have it in a pot and then just bring it in in the wintertime and then just put mm-hmm. it back outside in the summertime. Like, that'd be... There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work for a couple years, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. It's going to take some years before it outgrows the house, I think, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, man. Hey, uh, so, uh, BioCal, do you have a collection of media, like a digital collection of media? Um, yeah, I've got a Plex server. Okay, okay. Yeah. Kent, uh, I know you've got some, but uh, you're not a digital hoarder like me, so you primarily have uh, the... Not- not so much anymore. I I used to have a Windows server that I this this predates Plex, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah. And uh, a lot of stuff, like terabytes worth of shit on that, but that's uh, I haven't used that in several years. Yeah. Um, I have a Plex server that's got a lot of movies on it and a lot of. I mean, my wife collects DVDs, and to this day, like she can't pass by a good you know that five dollar bin. Like we're walking away with movies we already <laughs> had and shit. Um. <laughs> but, but it was five dollars uh, exactly um so we have a a large large plex collection but when i rip our dvds into the into the plex for whatever reason apple tv doesn't do the uh the the, the vob uh subtitles vob subtitles mm. it, it can only do like sidecar subtitles srt files so i've been going through and adding subtitles to all my movies uh, Holy crap. Like manually? No. <laughs> no. Oh, God. No. Okay, you, so downloading a, an SRT file. Uh, not even. Well, kind, kind of. I even automated that. I'm using FileBot to find the SRTs automatically. <laughs> okay. Got it. Got it. That, that, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you, I'm like, I know you're bored sitting yeah. on your ass, you know, not going to work, but God damn, dude. Here's <laughs> the title of your movie. Here's the part that kills me, though. The Apple TV won't use the VOB sub. Uh, my phone, an iPhone 10, will use the VOB sub. My iPad Pro uses the VOB sub. The kids' iPad Minis use the VOB sub, but the Apple TV won't use the VOB sub. The the PlayStation 4 uses VOB sub. Uh, my Windows machine, when I use the Plex player to play from a different computer, uses VOB. Like, the only thing in the entire fucking house that doesn't use VOB sub is Apple TV. Like, are <laughs> The, yeah, the one it, thing the, you probably care. The one thing that, that's, that has, yeah, the one thing, the one dedicated device to you to watching fucking TV won't use the one th- like. Really, <laughs> yeah, like big. little things like that. Just and then to cure that because my wife won't watch movies without without subtitles because she likes to read shit before it happens on screen. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Uh, and, and oh my god, I I I, I hate subtitles for so wow. many fucking reasons. Like when you my have wife's that... the opposite, she hates the subtitles on unless yeah. it's like required because they're speaking some other language. She hates them. My thing is, I've had too many movies that were like, and it's always minor. It's the minor shit. Uh, nine of twelve just popped in, said said hi, and I'd like to say hi back because I don't want to feel like type, typing right now. So hi nine of twelve. Um, the. I've had a few movies that the, the, a scene would be ruined because instead of saying mysterious sound from the, you know, creeps from the corner, it would say like, you know, the ghost of blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, Bob, Bob, the murderer who you find out. Is yeah, murderer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, thanks. Thanks for fucking up the last, you know, hour and a half of this movie. Like, thanks. Mm-hmm. So I, and, and it, what happens is if there's text on the screen, I read the text. I, I can't <laughs> not read it. Like yep, I, yep. 
Yep. So I'm it's, reading yeah, it, and then they say it. The reason I don't is because I'm exactly the same. I cannot not read it. Yeah. And therefore, I'm missing all of the nuance of the mm-hmm. scene. Well, right. And that, and it's like a constant sa- sense of fucking deja vu. Like you're saying this. You didn't. You, didn't you just say that? No, I read that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Next scene. You, didn't you just know I read that? Okay. It, like, it, it, fuck, I hate, I <laughs> hate subtitles. Yeah. Um, my wife loves them, so we have them. <laughs> <laughs> I always appreciate them. Like, if I'm at the doctor's office or something like that, and mm. there's a the TV is showing the news or something right. like that, but they don't want the volume to be up, then I appreciate, you know, that scenario. But that's that's really about it. Or or what BioCal said with, with uh, like foreign language subtitles. Right. Uh, but other than that, yeah, fuck subtitles. Well, when, when I rip the DVDs um, into my Plex server, it's, uh, it automatically takes any foreign subtitles, and I have the setting to where it hard burns those in. Oh, okay. Now, but then the problem is that if I go and find an SRT file and throw that in there, now I've got the hard burn in and the SRT text popping up at the same same time, but in different places. Mm-hmm. And is uh, now I've got now I've written twice. No, now I've got <laughs> treja vu. Like this is bullshit, man. <laughs> like sub subtitles titles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um so uh, that's I've been doing that, some of that this week, uh making all that happen. Kent, you had much better time watching TV than I did. Yeah, so there's a really cool documentary on uh Netflix. It's actually a documentary series, but there's only four episodes thus far. Uh it's called The Toys That Made Us. Mm. Have you guys heard about this? I've heard of it. I only it's heard asked. of it because I looked into it last week when you didn't mention it, and I was like, well, what is this? And then it popped up on my Netflix stream, and then I almost watched it, but I decided to do something else instead. I don't yep. know. Yeah, so I've, I've <laughs> seen all four episodes now, and man, what a cool documentary. If, if you grew up in the 80s at all, I highly recommend checking this thing out. Anybody newer, like a, like a 90s kid, you know, millennials, whatnot, I don't know if they would appreciate it as much. Mm. But this show talks about the, the you know your your standard '80s toys. It's got uh, Star Wars, GI Joe, Barbie, GI Joe, and and He Man, mm. and it talks about like the history of those, like where the uh, like where the uh, toy originated, like if it's based on another property, uh, how they got the rights, things like that. Right. And they they actually interview the toy makers, the people that worked for you know Kenner, or Hasbro, or or whatever company they happen to be talking about. And it was fascinating to see that process, but also just this like wicked, amazing nostalgia trip that took me back to being like six or seven years old. It was, it was fantastic. Mm. You had all those toys. I don't know about all of them, but I've had a good, I had a good deal of them. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know how I know? Cause you still have a lot of them. <laughs> I do, I do. Yeah, there's a box in my garage. Actually, several boxes in my garage, just full of Star Wars toys and shit. So I just got a my childhood collection of toys from my mom's house because she's moving. So she she was like, I've got like twelve boxes of crap here that's yours. So I've got, you know, I don't even know thirty pounds of Legos and all kinds of stuff. And I just came across this, which is a, a old Transformer. Uh, you remember Soundwave? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, a tape recorder that turns into a robot and everything. So I've got yep. this. Um, I just came across all these old toys that I had. I and, had uh, um, I had a bunch of the little cassettes, but I didn't actually have Soundwave himself. Yep. Yeah, same, I, same. I had like <laughs> yep. I had doubles of the cassettes. Like I don't know how I ended up with extras, but yeah, they all turned into like birds and like little uh, other animals and stuff. Yeah, it was like a little panther. Yeah. Oh hell yes. Yeah. That is awesome. So you'll appreciate this, BioCal. My my Wi-Fi in my house is named Ravage Eject, which is Ravage is who you just held up. Yeah. And the other one is Frenzy Eject. Yeah. Which is I've got uh, what, what sound in here. It's cartoons. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> my next, if I get another hotspot, I'm going to call it um, uh, Rumble Eject. Mm. Oh, nice. So <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Um, yeah. I should send you Ravage. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll, um, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay the postage. <laughs> I, I, I more just, than I'd get on eBay. I just recently <laughs> found, um, all my Legos from when I started recollecting as a, as, as a semi adult, um, when the prequels came out. So like the Nebu Starfighter, the X wing, like there's oh. a bunch of those that came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the tie fighter, all that kind of stuff. I just recently found my little box of those and, 
instead of assembling them, because I, the, I still got all the Legos, I still got the instructions, everything else. The thing that I remembered about that set, instead of like how awesome it was to have like all those just just sitting there chilling, assembled on, on my my freezer back in uh, back at uh, in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. I remembered that my D- Naboo set came with one piece wrong. So instead of being like an angle this way, it was an angle like two, I got two right sides and didn't get a left side. So oh, damn. you could only look at it from one side because you looked at it from the other side. It had this, like, this little thing that stuck out out of and yeah. That that's the thing that got me. Like that's that's how deep my OC- OCD runs when I've got nothing <laughs> better to do than sit at home. <sighs> that's crazy. Yeah. Um. These the the the, the, the mm, mm, right, the toys yeah. that made us. Um, compared to CNN's decades. Um. Well, okay. So the decades, those shows are, I would say, way like a like next level professional. Uh, you know, professional tech. Uh, these are more. Uh. I don't want to say amateur. I mean, they're definitely professionally done, but it's it's less documentary and more nostalgia trip. Yeah, I mean, they're very well done. I I don't want to say anything bad about them, but the decades are de- definitely next level mm. compared to them. Okay, well, I haven't finished the decades yet, so I guess I'll. Oh, dude. Yeah, you need to get caught up. Those are well, so good. The thing is, every time when I'm watching one of those, that's like an it's, it's an hour to an hour and fifteen minutes of dedicated time because it's telling a story. It's it's very yeah. well done documentaries by CNN, and um, you don't want to interrupt that. Like you don't want to just stop that and go and and finish it later because it's they're done very well. They lead you along this this story of of all these facts, and when I have an hour or something extra to just to watch something, I'm that's usually not even on my radar. Right. I think yep. I think yep. about it at times like this when I'm looking at you going, damn, I need to finish those decades. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So um we have a project that we need to do this weekend, dude. Okay. Um, I bet it has something to do with patreon.com slash ritual misery. It does. It does, because I've been doing some research. About Patreon? Uh, about other podcasts that do Patreon. Okay, okay. Um, apparently, we're doing it wrong. Yeah. Because yeah. there are some yeah, really, are. really shitty podcasts out there that are doing way better than we are mm-hmm. on their Patreon. And, um, like, we have goals on there that are kind of, like, kind of jokey, you know? Apparently we shouldn't have any any goals at all. Don't put goals because when you don't have a goal, you don't have any any like limit to what you expect. Because I, okay. I saw I actually made a spreadsheet today that I'll share with you this weekend. That there are Patreon like we like there should be a course on how to Patreon. Yeah, well, you know, and here's the thing: when we like the the version of Patreon that is up right now is basically the original that we put. Well, when I say the version of Patreon, the version of Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery mm. is basically what we did three years ago. Yeah, we haven't really touched it. Like well, only in like very very minor. Right. Right. Yeah. Ways. But but we're 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 gonna do be revamping the whole thing. Um. Yeah. Yeah. We we may even go monthly instead of going uh, per episode. I mean that, that we're, we're, nothing's off the table on how we uh, how we manage our Patreon um, because we want to make sure that we're adding enough value to the people that are willing to put it forth the money on the Patreon and we want to make sure that we're we're streaming stuff that people actually give a shit about on the Twitch for the people that are subbing on the Twitch like we we care about these things so this is all stuff that is all in flux and looking forward to uh, to revamps and things like that um, but meanwhile if you'd like to see what the goals the shitty goals we have on there right now. Uh, cruise on by patreon.com slash ritual misery. And you can see what I mean when I say we have room to improve. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But, but, uh, since we're talking about patreon.com slash ritual misery, I do want to say thank you to all of the people that are, uh, currently supporting us on that platform. Of course. We've even had a couple extras this, uh, this last month. Really appreciate that. It's yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, you guys are making this, um, this venture more than just a, uh, you know, a hobby and a cost for us. Mm. You're, you're kind of, I, I like what our friend Mark Jelinek 
says about Patreon, it helps him. It helps his podcast be cost or uh, what? What is it? Cost neutral? I think is how he says it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that is absolutely the case. Yep. Uh, Ritual misery is cost neutral because of our patrons, and we absolutely appreciate that. Yep. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get out to do some a live show or something like that here soon. Um, and that'll be because of, uh, the enabling of the Patreon. Yeah, absolutely. Now there are, um, there are some, several other things out there that we, that we like to talk about and we like to pimp and we like to spread the word about. And, uh, one of those things is our friends in Diamond Club and we have one with us tonight, BioCal. Hello. Can we, uh, can, can we, can we say your actual name? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so BioCal's real name is is uh, Bio with a B, and then Cal with a C. <laughs> right. Uh, yep. Mr. Cal. Um, uh, he, yeah. he goes by Mr. Cal in his local community. Yeah, uh, Mr. Cal. Please, my father is Mr. Cal. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Sorry, Bio. Call me Bio. <laughs> um, so how long have you actually been part of Diamond Club, like actively taking part in the whole shenanigans that is uh, a couple – Open care, open open and close carrots. Um, let's see. I think it was twenty fourteen. Um, I kind of joined because uh, I I watched Twit and watched um, Tech News Today, Tom Merritt, and all those guys. And when Tom left Twit, I was uh, watching DTNS Daily Tech News Show from day one. Mm. And um, one day at work, wanted to jump in on the chat, so I did. Jumped into IRC. Uh, irc.chatroom.net for anybody who wants to jump in there. And it still, it still works. I was going to say it's still happening, but it still works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's less happening nowadays, but um, I'm in there pretty much every day still. And uh, yeah, I, I just slowly became more and more involved with Diamond Club and all the shows around it, with Night Attack and, and uh, Weird Things and your guys' show and, and everything that's going on. So you're, you're mm-hmm. a fellow... Uh... Uh, Merit Militia, yeah, uh, transposee, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's a, and that is a very common uh, backstory for like probably half the guests that we've had on the show, Amos. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's good company to keep. I'll give you that. Yeah, I absolutely. Did, I did know Brian and Justin from Twit when they were on there with um, uh, their shows there, and that um, even Brian uh, guesting on this week in tech and that kind of thing. Mm. But I wasn't really big followers of them. It was more uh, Tom that I was really following. So, so as far as Twit goes, I just want to talk about Twit for a minute. Can we talk about Twit? Not, yeah, I've got not, no, not, no. not Twitch, you new people. Uh, Twit. Um, <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started watching Twitch or Twitch. See, and I'm all fucking it up. I started watching Twit only because Tom left Buzz Out Loud and went to Twit to start Tech News Today. Mm-hmm. Um, from that branched out to frame rate and, um, uh, iPad yes, weekly got... with oh. Sarah Lane. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that, that show died and uh, I was kind of thankful because I, I could never stand Leo. <laughs> I swear one day Twit is going to be like, Hey, you guys want to come on the show? Then Leo's going to listen to some fat episodes and be like, Oh, fuck them. Um, <laughs> I just, I just, I like any show that Leo is on. I just cannot watch. Yeah, something about him just kills me. Um, and then of course when 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 that relationship there broke down with Tom and he decided to go elsewhere. I won't say the relationship broke down. It was kind of a differences of direction, I guess. Creative differences. Yeah, it was a um, it was a mutual parting of ways. I think. Uh, it was it was the end of a contract, is what it was. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, you want to be yeah. Yeah, um, with Megan Maroney. Oh, yeah. See, I, 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 just, I can't. I, I don't twit at all anymore. Like, I'm completely out of the out of the system. Um, but that's what brought me to Diamond Club was watching frame rate, especially with with Brian, and that got me into NSFW right before it ended, and became Night Attack. So, that's my my way around it. And then Kent finally got addicted to it when I introduced him to Current Geek, and he got <laughs> brought into yeah, the fold well, I there. Think, I think you. I think you introduced <laughs> me to. NSFW first, uh, or was it Night Attack already? It was it was right in that transition. Mm. Uh, that's that's what that was my formal introduction. You were actually visiting me here in New Mexico. Uh, it was mm. like when I first moved here, 
and you introduced me and I was like, holy fuck, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and, but what really got me into the, the whole podcast aspect, because I always thought of, of NSFW or Night Attack as like a live show, something that you watch live and, and participate in the chat room and everything. But mm. as an actual podcast, the thing that hooked me was Current Geek. Mm. Uh, Tonda mentions, uh, Tonda Gossa in our chat mentions, don't forget Forecast. Right. And yes, Forecast was my introduction to Scott Johnson before it came to an untimely demise. Um, very fun show that I actually, I, I burned through, I don't know, like the first hundred episodes or whatever while I was deployed and then came back from my deployment and it ended like almost immediately thereafter. <laughs> So I was like, "Damn it!" You killed it. I I might have. I I, I burned it out. I was the I was the last fan. Um, and then hey, uh, now it's a segment. Yeah, now it used to be yeah. showing that's a segment. Still uh, not. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, we're, we still haven't been on the show, which is sad. Um, <laughs> one of these days, it's like our current ritual misery goal: be on current geek. Yeah, be invited on to current geek. Uh, organically at that, not because uh, we, we, yeah, that's the key. Because yeah. if you beg enough, I, I'm sure they'll put you on. Well, I'm, I might have have an inside line with the uh, with the person with the person who's guested most on the show uh, with another yeah. little project I'm working on called Let's Talk About Thrones. Um, yeah. But uh, even she was like, "Well, I can talk to him," and I was like, "No, no, don't. I'm not trying to pull favors. I want to be invited organic." Our goal, our our Patreon goal, is to grow so big that current geek can't not have us on. Um, <laughs> We've had those guys on our show for crying out loud. <laughs> and I was gonna say, I think you have more of an in than that. I think you have an in with one of the hosts at least. So, uh, you know, yeah. I, no, I think you're right, BioCal. If we if we asked, I think it would probably happen at some point. But yeah, yeah it's just like uh, like we didn't want to ask anyone for like you know to make us a. Uh, DC TV Pedia page, and eventually someone did it, and like it's it's so much more of a thrill to see like something just come to fruition, like like Amos said organically. I tell you what, and, uh, Brian and Justin must be living in hog heaven because they don't do shit. Everything just happens for them. Like they just mention something, it just ma magically appears. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, now I say that, but they put a lot of work into their shit, so I'm not I'm not <clears> trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. trying they, to yeah, downplay they, their they, efforts into their in individual projects. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's that, you know when when you're a cult leader, that's what happens. Right, right. It was, well, uh, Diamond Club's not a cult. For not the a record, cult. anybody that's cult. recording this, um, uh, not a cult, not a cult. I'm uh, sorry, it's not a cult. I forgot. Yeah. Sorry. Fuck, fuck the sun. It's not a cult. Not a cult leader. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when you're when you're not a cult leader, shit just happens. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Like, if, if shit's not happening in your life, just stop being a cult leader, and, and things will start happening. You're for the leader you. of not a cult. <laughs> yes. The anti cult. Um, <laughs> Diamond Group. Um, now, what other projects besides uh, Chat Room have you like, like other than uh, the old Showbot? Because you, and, and tell me how Showbot came down because you, you got like I started talking to you about Showbot specifically because we were trying to. I was trying to. I was basically I was trying to copy Night Attack and get some kind of assimilation into uh, into our our chat, and I was basically mm -hmm. fucking it up. <laughs> okay, yeah. So Showbot happened because, well, Showbot happened first because the great uh, El Khalif created it for us for our IRC mm. chat uh, for all the shows, and that that was just an amazing tool that he put together for us. Um, as many people know, and maybe a few don't, he passed away a while back, um, and it was the Showbot for IRC was rewritten by T2T2, another great Diamond Club person. Uh, he's got a Patreon, patreon.com slash T2T2. If you use the chat or the show bot there, he's, he's amazing. Um, but you wanted to use <clears throat> a show bot for your streams. And I set out, you, got, you asked for my help, and I set out to try and make the show bot because it's an open source project that T2T, T, T2T2 wrote. Um, I set out to try and set it up for Twitch. And for the life of me, I couldn't do it. It's just... The way it was written, uh, he wrote it in in uh, um, a language that I'm just not familiar with. So I decided, you know what? Maybe I'll I'll do my own version in PHP and MySQL, which is what I work in. Uh, make it work with Twitch, and found a, a nice Twitch bot that works, a night bot. Um, kind of put it all together, and it's kind of come to its own in the last about three months. I think it's been about three months since uh, 
since I started working on that, huh? It was like September. I mean, I could yeah, I could, probably probably closer to four months now. But yeah, it, yeah, I, yeah. I, I I could look back at my my phone call history because we sat on the phone for like two hours maybe trying to trying to muscle it through with the with the virtual <laughs> server that I had that just never yeah. quite worked out. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just we got it we got it up and running and working for you. And uh, as I was building it for you, um, I was trying to at the same time make sure i could build it so it would work for the other shows in diamond club and uh, yeah exactly and so i got i got uh, neshcom in on it and we got all the um night attack shows on it and that was working really well and then i created that whole back end which you were talking about earlier in the in the pre-show um so you can kind of see titles that have been submitted before that was a Uh, really unexpected awesome surprise by the way because you had you had mentioned, mentioned um, uh, messaged me the other day and like hey you know can you go with the new code and I was like okay cool so I went in there and I saw the back like the back page to it and I'd seen it before like briefly but I hadn't actually explored it there's mm-hmm. a lot of really cool stuff back there if you were into using if you really want to get into using it quite a bit like we should have hit the reset button for us on one January that we would have like this history for the year and it'd be a whole new contest at the end of the year but instead we're just gonna go with the way it is now. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, you, you've really built it up from something that was just basically a tool that everybody used and, and some people knew how to use it a little bit more than others and made it to where it's really scalable for anybody that's on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was kind of the goal. And, and, uh, I'm hoping I just created a new homepage for it at showbot.tv that has a good explanation, has a couple of screenshots that, uh, you were nice enough to let me use. And, um, I'm hoping that it catches on for other Twitch streamers. So, uh, if you stream a show on Twitch and need something to collect show titles or questions or, uh, I don't know, people's favorite ice cream flavor that they can vote on. You can use it for pretty much any kind of thing you you want to uh, that would collect things into a list and then people vote it up. So uh, if that sounds like a tool that you might use, go for it. It's free. Um, it's ready to go. Um, thank you very much. I do have a Patreon if you want to support me, but uh, it's not required by any means. Well, I think if uh, if you if you're using if you're using a, a, a showbot, I mean, you know, a, a buck a month is not too much to pay for something as cool as as a showbot is. So that's just my opinion. Yep. Yeah, give a fuck. Um, you, give so, a fuck. Give BioCal a buck. Yeah. Uh, so, so can't make sure you make that happen if it's not already happening for us. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh crap. I don't know if I am already. I have to check. <laughs> Spoiler: You're not. <laughs> we'll see. Shit. All right. Such all right. We'll bullshit. fix that. We'll fix that. Look, look, those Richard Misery guys are assholes. All right. They, they, they can, <clears throat> they can suck a nut, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, if, if you think Richard Misery sucks, just go ahead and give them a couple bucks and maybe they won't suck so much. Uh, almost rhyme. <laughs> um, yeah. That's like a slant rhyme. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know what happened right there. I'm, I'm Eminem in training. Um, <laughs> hey, man, uh, real quick, uh, do you guys have Sam's Club where you are? Not I do here now. No, no. Um well if if you do have Sam's Club, I'm I'm sorry to tell you that they're shutting their doors in several states. Oh shit. Like really? just shutting down. <laughs> uh and I found out because our local Sam's Club here is closing completely. So people showed up for work this morning and found out they didn't uh they, they didn't have to work today. Oh wow. What that suddenly? Yeah, there are three stores in Alaska, and all three of them are on the chopping block. Wow. So they were closed today. They reopened tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and then they are closed permanently on the 27th of January, which I don't know if you're checking or not, but that's just a little over two weeks' notice. Yeah. That is, that's, man, did they, did they at least have like a, you know, like, hey, maybe we're looking at doing something? No. Or it was just like, uh, yeah, business as usual, business as usual. Eh, fuck you guys. You're done. Yes. Yes. Uh, plan, wow. Plan B. Um, and it's happening in, I don't know if they're closing all of them in other states. Of course, there's only three in Alaska, <clears throat> so it's easy to kill all three. Um, yeah. But uh, Alaska, Texas, New York, Indiana, um, Oklahoma, like all these, all these states are just getting stores to just cut. Um, and it's, yeah, it, like complete surprise to me. That's yeah. a huge chain for, for that to happen to them. I, we had a couple of smaller chains around here do that, that same thing where people just show up and there's a sign on the door that says, Hey, congratulations, go apply for unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, damn. Like we just had a, a Kmart close a couple of months ago, but it was it was known for a long time, like probably four or five months ahead of time that they were going to close. Uh, mm. I'm just going to say that we've known for about 15 years that Kmarts are going to close. So. Well, sure, sure. But I mean, these employees <laughs> knew that I mean, they were, uh, they, they were like going to have to find a new job. You the know, here earliest in Latvia, warning. Months. Yeah, the earliest warning you've ever had to find a new job was Sears <laughs> slash Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you get hired there knowing that it's it's only a temporary thing. Yeah. <laughs> They're like even our temp positions get benefits, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a seven year temp, but yeah. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, th- th- I think the news there is that we still had a Kmart open. We um, right. Yeah, I don't think we have a Kmart open here locally, but we do have a Sears, and the Sears is directly across the street from Walmart. In fact, the Sears is in the old Walmart building. Walmart outgrew it, built one across the highway, a newer, bigger one, and sold the old building or leased it or whatever to Sears. Sears moved in. I've been in there several times, maybe five in the in the two years I've lived here, close to two years I've lived here. And I've never been in there where there was more than three customers, including myself, at any time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a we had a, a Sears here for a while. They've also since closed. Uh, but yeah, I think all they had was refrigerators and lawnmowers. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> and uh, I, I did in fact buy my refrigerator from there, <laughs> and then they closed like six months later. Uh, so much for that warranty. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, and go figure, because it's now starting to shit out in certain regards. So the uh, right across the street from the Sears is a park and ride. Well, the hmm. park and ride is more used than the Sears parking lot, so it actually just folds over into the Sears parking lot. Damn. So if you drive by there at night, like late at night, you just see a bunch of share vans in the parking lot at Sears. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. That's how, that's how it works. I don't know if there's a Sears around here. <laughs> you don't have Sears. You, yeah. don't have, you don't have Sam's. Where do you live, man? <laughs> I, I live in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> Jesus. We don't actually. We don't even really have Walmart around here. <laughs> he's, oh wow. He's yeah. like he's like. Well, got this one in the in the chat says we used to have a Sears in our mall. He has mall in quotes. Mm. Yeah. He, he says I say mall, but it was pretty small. Uh, uh, yeah. No, that's exactly the scenario that I had here because we we have a mall, but we. The joke here is that it's it's more of a hall than a mall. Mm. It's, it's really small. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> like Doctor Seuss over here. Um, yeah. But but our Kmart and our Sears were in the mall, and now they're just empty empty storefronts. We uh, it, it, so in Abilene we had two WalMarts, and then there was an older Walmart that was still around. Walmart still had the lease on it, and it was unused, but you could tell it was a Walmart. Uh, and it was this huge lot, this massive lot that just wasn't nobody nobody built up anything around it because it was this Walmart that was just closed, you know. Um, we did have a Kmart there, and I it was right next to the DMV, and I think I parked there once, but I never actually went inside. And we had a Sears at the mall. It it was wasn't even an anchor store. We had the Dillard's on one side and a J.C. Penny on the other. The Sears was one of those those middle anchors, you know, those little like offshoots or whatever. And yeah, yeah. I I don't know that I ever went in there either, except to use the restroom. (laughs) And I I lived there for four years. So you lived at the store. Well, no, I lived in Abilene, which might as well (laughs) have been at the store. Cause it's all kind of, right. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah, Abilene's not much bigger than Alamogordo. No, it it is bigger though. I mean, there's a, it is. Yes, it actually is. There's an interstate that runs through it. That, yeah, I, I'm nowhere near an interstate. No. It takes me over over an hour to get to an interstate. <laughs> Literally, it was the middle of nowhere. Huh? Yeah. So you yeah. said in in chat room you're about to get a Hobby Lobby. Uh, we have a Hobby Lobby here, but it's not a Hobby Lobby. Lobby. It's a <laughs> Hobby Lobby. It's what is it? A Michaels or not a Michaels? Oh yeah. It's a it's something else. Um, apparently it's really racist in there, so nobody in my family will go. <laughs> it's. Re- the store, like what the the store owners are racist, like, or they're, like they they have like signs up that say like uh, you know whites only, or uh, like I, they have a separate drinking fountain or depending physical on physical uh, building racist. Yeah, or? I, I I don't I don't know because I've never been there. I I don't <laughs> I just know that no nobody in my family will go. They're like no, but we hate that store. I'm like okay, all right, <laughs> yeah, well fuck that store. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, Hobby Lobby. I mean, we're is... living in it. We're living in an age now where just merely the allegation of it being racist is enough to avoid it. Hobby Lobby is outwardly against gay people, and I'm like that. You, you, how, how Hobby Lobby is against gay people? Yeah, like outwardly against. What does that even mean? Because, because it's Hobby Lobby itself is is owned by a. Very, it's like Chick Fil A. They're like yeah. the ownership is super religious. Uh, okay, so okay. like. You know they're they're outwardly against gay people, and I'm thinking Hobby Lobby shouldn't be against gay people. Well, I, <laughs> what, what what are you implying? Oh my god, I was gonna say that they're probably <laughs> against cults as well. Uh, so we might just want to avoid well, that. It's good, it's, well, I mean, we should avoid it if if we were in fact a cult. Yeah, but we're not. We a are cult. not. Not a cult. Not a cult. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> There, so there we go. That's uh, that that's that's all the stuff that I had to go down with this week, except for one of the the uh, these. My levels are all jacked up this week. Um, yeah, yeah that, that was pretty crazy. Yeah. So all right, you got Simon and Holt. Who would the rest of the world vote for in your country's election? Right, I. I'm going to say real quick what I what like my initial thought on this and then uh, I want I want to hear what you have to think because this was your this you chose this talk and I'm mm. real interested in why you chose it. Mm. So basically this guy has a, a a website in a sense that um it's a whole system but it's basically it's fronted by a website that you can go in and vote I'm putting in quotes here air, air quotes vote in other countries elections. So like if you were if you let's say you lived in Germany, you could have voted in the United States presidential election. You could have voted for the the uh, Brexit ref- referendum, um, uh, Zimbabwe yeah. election, like, yeah. you know, wh- whatever, like any of the, the uh, world elections, you get to cast your vote. And this guy tallies all of the, you know, the votes and he sees what the world would have done versus what the the country itself voted for. Right. And um, it's kind of an interesting concept, but I, you know what? I have one more thought about it, but I'm going to wait until I hear what you say about it. And okay. then I'll, I'll just basically retort. Um, so the reason I picked it, because it, I thought it was an interesting question. Uh, who would the rest of the world vote for in your country's election? I, it, it's an interesting concept to me, the, the idea of globalism versus localism, you know? Um, and, also, because we can't, you and I, uh, because of contractual obligations and legal referendums, we cannot um, get too political on our on our podcast, uh, unfortunately, because we both have a lot to say that we're we're stifling <laughs> down. Um, but anytime we can we can do something like this and and show that the way things currently are isn't necessarily the way things that they the way things should be, even if it's just from a different point of spe- point of view. This the, in this way the. Uh, the outward perspective looking on the U S I just, I, I want to, I, I like to bring up that opportunity and, 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 you know, I enjoy that, that debate really. And in this one, so this is like a 15 minute talk. And in the first five minutes, he explains his website, explains, uh, he starts out with, with a little uh, limerick about how we just had a, a, a election in the, in the U S and, uh, Hillary Clinton won by a landslide 52%. And then, um, the other lady that was running, and then yeah, second second place was Jill Stein. Jill Stein, with like, I never remember her name. It was like, like seventeen percent or nineteen percent or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and like, then Trump with twelve, and then the rest was uh, 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 like all the others plus Gary Johnson. Um, <laughs> yeah. and and then he explains, well, this is how the rest of the world voted for our election, you know. And it, it, he goes on to explain kind of how the website works and what the purpose of it is behind it, and and how the 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 results never match up. The person that wins the global election on his website has not won the local election for the actual election. It, it never matches up. It's always like the second place person comes in first on the global scale or whatever. And he brings up the idea that we have, we vote locally, even if we have globalism in mind and we need to start thinking not just how does how is this election going to affect me and the people that I live around but also affect the rest of the world because 140 million people voted for president in the United States last year that's less than 2% of the world's population or some random shit like that some whatever the number comes out to is almost 8 billion people alive 
Yeah. And then the, 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 the last 10 minutes of the talk are complete bullshit. It's just him like constantly trying to emphasize, emphasize how important his point of view on this globalism yeah. is. And it, it just, well, it, it got to be foot stumpy. The yeah, first five so minutes was, was pure meat. And then after that, it just kind of yeah. blah. And that's all right. So you, you pretty much saw it the same way I did. So th- this guy, I, I did like an analogy that, that he kind of put out there. Not really an analogy. Let's call it an analysis where he said that like uh, uh, President Trump's America first agenda he has no problems with that, like on the surface. Like, of course, you know, America first, of course. I mean, this is your country. You should put your country first. You should put your people's uh, interests ahead of anyone else's. I mean, that's that's kind of what you're there for, to right. represent your people. But, like, that's where, that's that's the only praise that he had for it. Because the, the way that it's implemented, or the way, like, I guess the implication of that slogan, America first, is that America first means everyone else last right like go america fuck everyone else is is basically what like how it's interpreted yeah and i think there's i think there's a lot of truth to that and i understand his point of view with that like it's not like it's not really like that we are a world community like we were just talking about diamond club we are a multinational community and to think that like oh our country is awesome but if it's awesome only at the expense of every other country, like fuck everyone else. Well, that's fucking over some people that I give a shit about. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the point that he's, he was getting at, I think, but yeah, you're right. He got way foot stompy. And I think he tried to, even though he said he wasn't, I think he was oversimplifying the idea that, that we need to like, as a world community, understand world needs and not just like, you know what? What's across the street from me? Right. Um, sure, but I mean that's a that's a cultural change. That's a that's a complete change in in like governmental philosophy. Yeah. Like from the if you're because he was talking to the voters, he wasn't talking to world leaders necessarily. He was talking to voters. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that that's realistic in 2018. Um, and and then the other thing, the other thought that I had was the reason that the vote was always the exact opposite, like uh, in real life, Trump won the election, but in his election, Trump was like damn near dead last. In his election, uh, Brexit was uh, uh, overturned or d- denied or uh, whatever. Mm. Uh, in real life, it actually happened. Like every time, every time they pick a leader, it's always the opposite. Well, that makes perfect fucking sense though, because the world voting for someone's leader. Because he, it's exactly the same. It's it's like what he was saying, uh, but the opposite, I guess. So like he was saying that that uh, uh, people vote with their own interests instead of the world's, where it should be the other way around. Well, I'm thinking that the 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 world voters or the, the whoever the fuck these people are, who are the people that go to this website? I don't even know. Uh, I've never yeah. heard of it until this TED talk. So it's <laughs> like how scientific could this possibly be? But those folks are looking at what's in it for me. Fuck that country. You know what I mean? Right. So I think his, I think he might be drawing the wrong conclusions from his data. I, because of course I, someone's going, So of course the world is not going to vote for Trump because Trump is like very vocal about fuck everyone else. Right. You know what I mean? So of course it's going to be, yeah. you know, I, so I, I uh, again, this is a good talk for five or six minutes, and then it just it just <laughs> yeah. turns to mush. Um, yeah, uh, Biocow, do you have any thoughts? Uh, like like globalism versus uh, nationalism. I, I, not not so much in a political sense, but like in a uh, like world community. Does this make any sense about like if we were to vote for other world leaders, things like that? I <laughs> even though I do watch the politics show with with just Robert Young, I'm not a big political person, honestly. Yeah, I yeah. kind of put blinders on and and try not to pay too much attention, but um, yeah, I mean, I understand that when I when I try to think that way, I do try to think globally rather than more locally or even even just our country because everything affects everything now. It may not have been that way a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, but it definitely is today. 
and it's right. it's becoming more important. And um, I only see it getting better, honestly. It, it's just at this point we're waiting for the uh, the old uh, you know the old guard to, to die off, and 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 the new people who grew up with the internet and grew up with a global uh, thought process uh, to take power. So it's gonna be an exciting change. I'm not gonna be here for. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause yeah, when it exactly. comes to stuff like that, like cultural change in government or whatever, yeah, it's typically like 40, well, maybe even 50 years behind. You, you figure mm-hmm. by the time that the people in America that grew up with the internet take charge, they're still going to be 20 years ahead, at least 20 years ahead of some African countries getting that same privilege. So mm. even when our kids that have grown up with the internet and it's just always, you know, it's ubiquitous, it's always been there. Even when they reach the maturity level where they are making decisions on that global scale, they're still just the forefront of that whole transition, that 20, 30, maybe yeah, 40 year transition. It's like the crest, of, the crest of the wave or the beginning of the wave, I yeah, guess. It's, yeah, we are not going to be here for the full realization and actualization of globally interconnected uh, uh, civilization. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, we'll be, we'll be dead for a few decades before that even yeah, is uh, on the on the table. <laughs> exactly. I, I it's just it's that that's probably like when I think of mortality, that's the thing that I that I think of that I'm going to miss the most is that mm. that's going to be such a huge change and a huge difference and it really really excites me, but I'm not going to be here for it. It, it kind of I I kind of get sad but then also that's a lot of transition I won't be here for too. So, uh yeah, yeah you hate the transition. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a transition guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So uh, overall, I would I'd say watch this, but as soon as you get bored, turn it off. That's that's why that's where I'm at with it. The the yeah, second you yeah, decide, exactly. you know, he, once you're bored, yeah. W- <clears throat> once he repeats himself the first time, click it off, move on to something else. Um. I also watched a, a Shonda Rhimes uh, TED talk from uh, a couple years ago, and oh, I shit. thought that was so fucking fascinating. I. My my wife loves Shonda Rhimes TV shows. I think Shonda Rhimes as a person is fascinating. She's just amazing. So um, that might that might be a, a one for later on. But yeah, hmm. okay, yeah, right. I on. didn't I didn't get I didn't get a chance to watch the TED talk you guys were talking about, but um, I did see one about this guy talking about how to dry your hands with one paper towel. Did you see that one? That was a great one. I love it. It's got a great tip for. Uh, you know, reducing waste and just being more green. And uh, sorry, couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. God damn it. All right. So this is the, <laughs> at least the third episode this is, this is, yeah. of RMP that this Ted talk has come up. Uh, uh, and, and I just want to, I just want to say, uh, uh, I think the quote is God damn Amos. How big are your hands? <laughs> <laughs> Was that that was Richard Gunther yeah. quote, quote yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, From his first appearance on our show. Um, yeah, and then Cabo, when uh, his his first appearance, I believe, on the show, yeah. he brought up that TED talk, uh, and yeah, I still think of that motherfucker when I'm at work <laughs> pulling off paper towels and I look in the mirror as I'm drying my hands. I'm like, God damn it, Cabo! It's almost a daily occurrence for me. Oh shit, Cabo. <laughs> Um, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. So, so congratulations by all cow. I'm now going to think of you every day at work. (laughs) (laughs) When you're using those seven or eight paper towels. Yeah. Um, oh, 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 oh oh my God. So I don't, I don't know. Kent, um, how often do you take a shit at work? Ooh, um, cause it's a, it's a game, right? Probably rare. Like it's a game it's- that our, our our good friend Jack, um, it's a game he always played, and I, and I follow the same philosophy that, uh, the the game of not shitting at work is one that's fun to play because you can never lose because if you do lose the game you're still winning because you're getting paid to shit. Um, <laughs> uh, how often do you shit at work? I okay. uh these days probably once or twice a month. Okay, uh, so it's not like super common, but it's not. Super rare either. By okay, how how often do you shit at work? Um, eh, once every couple of months, maybe. Okay. If, okay. Eh, only if I have to. All right. Um. Right, yeah. So yesterday I was shitting at my wife's work. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Uh, and and 
I hadn't been there in like a couple months because I've pretty much been staying at home and going to the doctors. And this is actually on the way back from the doctor's office. We stopped at her work. Um, they changed their soap dispensers. There was this one that was broken, like the handle was broken. So you had to like put your finger a certain way to get the actuation. But there's always soap in that one because nobody wanted to use it, right? So that was like my favorite one to use. Um, <laughs> they, they changed the soap dispensers. They changed the paper towel dispensers. And then they changed the shit ticket dispenser. Oh, wow. Okay. Instead of one that you like pull down, it's just a roll. You can like kind of give it a gentle tug and you get this, you know, you get a little swath of, of shit tickets and you kind of fold it up the right way to wipe your ass, you know, effectively. Um, it's this one that it, it, it like it's a little thing that you pull out of the middle. It's like the, 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 um, x ray clouds coming out of the middle of a black hole, you know, they just kind of shoot out the sides. It's kind of like that yeah. coming out of the middle of this roll. And and it comes out and it's all like wrapped up, so you gotta like unfold it, you know. Otherwise, you just have this basically this fucking twine of toilet paper that you're trying to use to wipe your ass. <laughs> it's like a rope. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. so and 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 it's designed it's like floss. The 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 sphincter <laughs> that these toilet paper sheets come out of is so tight because I mean it's still a new system, right? If you pull it out, it, you'll get one rectangle of 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 shit ticket, like a single shit ticket. You fold that in half. Like, what are you doing with that? This shitty paper in the first place. You're not really using that to wipe your ass. Like, you need a, at least a couple layers, right? Like, I'm not alone on this. So you got to pull it out real gentle. So you got to gently massage the, the the paper out of the sphincter that you got to pull. And, and then what the fuck? And, and then you get the shit out. And, and you got to unroll it. Like it's rolled up. It's like twisted. And so you got to unroll it. And then you get, then you got to fold it and fold it. And then you got like, then you got like a proper sized shit ticket mitt that you can use to wipe your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was so pissed. <laughs> a shit ticket mitt. <laughs> I, I was so right pissed because oh, it was one of those, one of those things where I was in there. My wife was, was putting her shit away at, uh, at her desk. And so we could, you know, we'd leave and come home. And uh, I was in there. I was supposed to be in there for a quick shit. I ended up getting stuck in a fucking Twitter rabbit hole, you know, while I'm just, well, so uh, and all of a sudden I look at the clock. I'm like, oh, I've been in here like 15 minutes. I got to fucking wipe my ass real quick and get the hell out of here. And I, I come to this beast of a, a, a single shit ticket <laughs> piece of fucking garbage. <laughs> I was so angry, so fucking angry. Like, it's like shit ticket paper mache. <clears throat> oh my god! I was, I was, what you're saying is it it took you longer to wipe your ass than to shit. It it did. It was like this puzzle. You know those like logic, like those little puzzles people put on their desk. Like, hey, can you get the ring out from in the rope and the toothpicks and shit? And you're like, you're fucking with it for like an hour and a half, and finally you throw it and the shit comes apart. And like, oh, awesome. They're like, okay, now you put it together. And like, fuck you, it's your toy. You put it together. Um, <laughs> that's how I felt. This totally bit. like it, it was. It wasn't a. If if you're in a hurry, this is not the paper dispenser that you need. It, <laughs> I was so fucking angry. So angry. This is not the toilet paper you're looking for. <laughs> Clearly not. Um, oh and and like God. I said, this is, it wouldn't matter if it was like a good toilet paper that you could trust to hold together while you gave yourself a, a quick wipe down the crack. This was like that. Like it was, I unfolded it, folded, you know, uh, unraveled it, folded it into a nice little square that I could use. And it started disintegrating before I even had a chance to wipe. Like it is the worst government toilet paper ever. And it came out of this piece of sh this fucking garbage. Oh my god, I was so angry. <laughs> so uh, this is this is why I don't shit at work or my wife's work or or anywhere. Well, it used to be that I would shit at my wife's work instead <clears throat> of my work. I would go visit my wife for lunch, and before I left to go back to my job, I would shit at her job because she had the nice clean bathroom with the good dispenser. <laughs> Well, now they fucked that up. Now I don't, I'm going to go back to my job. And they're going to have the same dispenser. And I'm going to be, it's going to be even worse because we got a nasty bathroom. That, like it's a fucking building from like 1942 that no one's ever cleaned and a piece of shit dispenser. Like I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm just. Look, when, man. when it comes to shitting, it's, I, it's like the um, speech from Pulp Fiction that Tarantino gives is it's like my wife's work buys shit toilet paper. When I shit, I buy gourmet shit. So I can use, like, you know, <laughs> actually feel it on my ass. Yeah. And, you know. I was, <laughs> yes. I go that, up on absolutely. And that used to be the case. That's why I would go go to her job to shit. It was, like, it was brightly lit. It didn't feel like a dungeon, you know? Like, oh, my. I don't so know. So that you, bathroom was nicer than yours at home? Uh, 
Well, their bathroom is closer because I live an hour from work. So, yeah. <laughs> like living, living. I, my my job is is thirty four miles door to door from my house, but it can take anywhere between forty five and two hundred minutes to get here, depending on what the traffic wants to do and how many moose want to fucking die on the road that day. So it may, you you make a conscious decision if you have the inkling of shit. Do I have like enough reservoir? Has my diet been kind enough to me that I know I can withstand <laughs> the worst possible delay should this go south? Like so, you have to make that conscious decision on the way home. It's like living in California. I I'm sure Squid knows exactly what I'm talking about. Before Squid leaves work and drives an hour home, he's got to make that conscious decision. Do I need to shit now or can I wait until I get there? I, I lived in the I, I live in the Bay Area and my commute used to be up to almost an hour and forty five minutes and that's why I, I've just trained myself over the years to only shit at home. Mm. I I just hold it. Mm. <laughs> oh, God, you, you must yeah. have a much better, Tra more regular diet than I do. <laughs> Sam Cow has a trained sphincter. Yeah, <laughs> I've got, I do. I've trained my sphincter. I, I mm. shit in the morning. I shit in the evening. Oh, I man. used to be on a, on a two day a week schedule, but. <laughs> Wednesdays and Sundays. Oh, Wednesdays and Sundays. So if you ever see him on Saturday and he, his face is all contorted, you know what's up. Good <laughs> God, man. That's some talent. Um, holy crap. Oh, um, man. Um, hey, can we got anything else on this shit show of a show? <laughs> <laughs> um, we do, actually. Uh, we Okay, so we were going to have a special interview with uh someone this evening uh that fell through it's Tay Allen was supposed to be stoned after her after her <laughs> sur oral surgery and come talk to us and have all kinds of candid things to say and instead she got stoned early and wasn't available to to make the phone call yeah and so she asleep. got too stoned <laughs> to give the stoned interview yeah so. hey, you, you know you get you, that's like that's 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 like super stoned to not be able to, <laughs> if if you're too stoned to give a stoned interview with the intent of it being a stoned interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can uh, ask me for uh, questions and I'll see how I do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ. <laughs> oh man. If we only had something prepared. Oh my God. If we'd only done our job. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. God damn it. Preparation. Uh, no, but uh, what we do have though is some of our favorite people in the whole world have a drink show mm. sent us a video for y'all's enjoyment. Uh, let's see if I can uh, if I can make this happen the right way this time. Hello, virtual misery. Brittany Lee Walker here from Have a Drink. Uh, today, I am trying the barrel aged Old Rasputin from North Coast Brewing Company. Um, this beer comes in at eleven point nine percent ABV and thirty eight IBUs. And you can find this particular bottle by looking for the double X or the Roman numeral 20 on the label. And every year, uh, the brewery actually ages a special batch of their Russian Imperial Stout in bourbon barrels. This one has a score of 4.21 out of 5 on Beer Advocate. It smells very rich and chocolatey. A little bit of that bourbon aroma as well. Very rich, definitely taste um, barrel aged. You can kind of get a little bit of the sweetness from the bourbon, but also kind of just a, a little note of chocolate and very um, dark, bitter coffee, which I'm kind of a fan of. So <laughs> uh, for more tastings and education on what you drink, check out Have a Drink Show on twitch.tv and social media or go to haveadrinkshow.com. Now you can also support our show over at patreon.com slash haveadrinkshow. See you next time. Thanks. There we go. And thank awesome. you, thank you, Kim, for reminding me of that I I actually had that queued up and forgot all about it, like uh, you know, like like a, a bad person. Yeah, yeah, it it happens. It happens, especially to bad people. Mm. Uh, so but no, we we love have a drink show. Uh, thank you, Brittany, for for that uh, beer review. That was that was fantastic. We look forward to another one next week. Um, BioCal, if people want to follow what you've got going on, where would they go to do that? 
um, you should stand right here and just go everywhere I go. If you want to follow me, or you can go to just, Twitter. Just don't follow uh, him too at, closely on Wednesdays or Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> Sundays you want to want to steer clear. Um, no, uh, uh, Twitter is just at BioCow, and uh, or you can follow uh, if you want to. I don't even know why. If you want to follow Showbot app um, on Twitter, you can do that as well. And um, check out Showbot.tv if you're interested in using that tool for your stream. So uh, I am. Uh, Always making improvements to it. I plan to for quite a while, and and uh, I've got lots of ideas, and uh, I'll post them up on that Twitter account. So, very cool, very cool. Excellent. Uh, Kent, how about you, man? Yeah, rm underscore del noche on Twitter. Uh, check me out over there. I'm either del noche or del noche <clears throat> seventy seven. Like pretty much everywhere else on the internet. Uh, I particularly like pimping out my Untapped. If you're a beer person, I'm del noche over there. Uh, hit me up and uh, we can toast each other's beer tastings. Very cool. I did some uh, some untapping uh, uh, the other night. Uh, we had a Tuesday talk time family meeting and uh, me, my wife, my sister-in-law, and the twins each tried, uh, I think, three beers. All so right. Excellent. It was awesome. Uh, the and, twins. And, and on untapped, you are? Uh, Ethan Kane, of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> and on, on Twitter, you are? Ethan Kane. Uh, okay. Um, if somebody wanted to follow your personal Twitch channel, your Ethan Kane. If oh, I see a trend here. Yeah. So, if people want to follow you on the internet, go pretty much anywhere and uh, follow Ethan Kane. Uh, it's either Ethan Kane or Ethan Kane seventy seven for the round ra- random places that I I couldn't uh, snag Ethan Kane fast enough. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, just uh, 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 go, go there, do the things, find the places, and, and meet the peoples or do something like that. Um, we, very shortly, we're going to have ritualmisery.com slash swag back in operation. I just went through there and, and yes. did some stuff on the store. I'm, I'm about to upload some uh, some some things in there and uh, make that a thing again. Um, and uh, BioCal, we really, really like to appreciate you for, for last second showing up and uh, having the time to, to hang out with us tonight and meet the, meet the folks. We never did get around to your real name. I guess we'll just wait for the for the post show on that one. Um, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. You can submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. And thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music for our show and all the other awesome shit that you do out there. Uh, thank you for listening and or watching. For Kent, for BioCal, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamonds, 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 diamonds. Ah. Let's see if this will work tonight. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it did work. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs>